Uh, hey guys, I'm here with Paul Grimer um, in New South Wales. Uh, well, Paul's um, been uh, on a long journey to um, try and um, uh, get something happening with the, the Combat Sports Board. Um, so he has uh, a petition that I'll, I'll put in the comments below for you guys to have a look at. Um, and the petition is about... Um, here, I'll actually read it to you guys. So this petition was written by the Shadow Minister. Shadow for... Minister of Sport, Linda Voltz. Yep. So what, what's been written is, um, the petition of residents of New South Wales brings to the attention of the House the continued failure by the Combat Sports Authority in improving safety and regula regulating combat sports. The undersigned petitioners declare that combat sports participants and organisations have lost confidence in the ability of the Combat Sports Authority to effectively manage the sport. We therefore call on the government to remove the current board and replace them with a new board uh, with at least one representative elected by registered members of Combat Sports. So what I'm going to do is um, just have a chat with uh, Paul for him to just elaborate a little bit more on, on the petition that he's running there um, and what uh, you guys can do um, to if you support the cause. Mm -hmm. So first of all, can you just let everyone know um, a little bit about um, your background in, in Combat Sports? Well, I've been involved with Combat Sports Martial Arts for 43 years. I started when I was 10 years old. I started with Japanese Jiu Jitsu. Mm -hmm. I don't think Brazilian and Jiu Jitsu existed back then, many yeah, years right. ago. Um, from there, I, I left and went and trained with a non classical martial artist where everything was mongrelized um, to hurt people. Mm. I studied many different arts there uh, Filipino martial arts. Uh, the Lin Wan Kundu was the, the art, but also it incorporated Jeet Kundu. Uh, Filipino martial arts, Thai boxing, Savat, Salat, Capoeira. Yep. I then ventured down the fight game side mm -hmm. of things, started competing. Mm -hmm. Competed in kickboxing when they used to have to wear long pants. Yep. <laughs> um, competed in full contact kung fu, which is like, I suppose you call it sander or sanchao, yep. which is, you know, different again, a lot more rules. Mm -hmm. um, and led me down the path of where I am now, 43, at least, you know, 43 years later. Yep. When did you uh, change uh, over from uh, from competing to become a trainer? Oh, I was doing both at one stage. Yeah, right. Um, I, well, the gym's been open since 1990. Yeah, right. So I was fighting and training, and then oh, the injury, the, the, I had a subdural brain hemorrhage, which retired me from my... Well, title oh, fight, wow. th yeah, three months before the fight, the doctor retired me. So, so. Did, um, as well as running the gym, you were also a promoter as yeah, well? Yeah, well, when, once I stopped fighting, I needed something to... It sort of shattered my life, I suppose you could say. And mm. I, I needed something to get that buzz back, and promoting was what had sort of done that. And yeah. I was sick of seeing mismatches. I was sick of seeing amateur fighters win paperweight trophies and... I was just, so I tried to do the best I could, try to give people value for money, put on a lot of fights, a lot of titles with legi legitimate people fighting for them, you know. Yep. And um, it's funny because a lot of my fighters lose on my show. It yep. doesn't happen on many other promoters' shows, I suppose, that are trainers. What's the point of being a paper champion? You fight who you... Or, I used to obtain fighters I could obtain with the budget I had. Yep. You know, sometimes you ring an amateur fighter and he wants two grand for an amateur fight, or... Sorry, mate, I'm not paying that. You're yep. an amateur. Turn pro, I'll pay you. But, yep. you know, that was the idea behind it. Okay, and um, how many shows had you put on? 49. My next show, which probably, we don't know when that's going to happen now, yep. will be my 50th show. Yep. So, yeah, right, 50 shows. That's a well, huge 49, amount of shows. Yeah. Oh, there are people that have done more. Yep. But, um, you know, it was my passion. I loved doing it. Yep. I put something back in. You know? And so can you um, let us know... Um, so you, you've obviously been involved in a lot of different facets of the combat sports yeah, well, industry in your time. Yeah, well, um, well, look, without blowing my trumpet, I'm just a guy doing a job. I don't think I'm special. But I didn't do three things. I didn't win a world title because the doctor retired me three months before the fight. Don't know if I would have won it, but I would have given it a crack. Yep. I've never been a ringside physician because I'm a dumbass. I'm no doctor. <laughs> And I've never been a card girl because my hairy butt and a G-string <laughs> would really not appear to anyone. But apart from that, I've sanctioned shows. I'm a sanctioning body rep. I've refed, I've judged, I've time-keeped. I've got my own boxing ring, which I'll high rep to the combat sport industry. I'm a fighter. I'm a trainer. 
I'm still a fighter even though I'm retired because I'm fighting the government now on a different issue. I even emceed a show, or years ago, I co emceed a show in Queensland mm -hmm. on one of Bob Batwin's shows. Didn't do a very good job, but they asked me to and I helped. And, you know, this, this sport is my passion. It's not, it's not just my work, it's, mm. it's what I love. It's what's kept me alive, I suppose you could say. Yeah. So, so um, on that note as well, uh, with the petition that you've got going, can you just give us um, a rundown on exactly what the petition is, is for? Well, I, I've met with three ministers. None of them could help me. I've met with two shadow ministers. They have helped me immensely. When I found out there was a new one, they told me her name. I remembered I wrote her a letter in 2006 regarding another issue. I found out she's now the shadow minister. I connected with her office. They said put it in writing. I met with her. She's a very busy woman. She still took time out of her very busy schedule to meet with me. I told her what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. She drafted that petition for me and said, get it signed. And if we get 10,000 signatures, yep. they're forced to debate this in the lower house. Okay. And that's what we need to do, bring to the attention of the government that what they've done hasn't improved safety. Um, and can you let us know um, exactly what it is people are signing on the petition? So what is it that, that well, they've the, done? That, that's well, the, they've, the, we're asking for the removal of the current authority. Mm -hmm. If you look at the, the members of the current authority, which I have here... I'll post this up yeah, in the comments you, you can, as well. There is no one there that knows anything about combat sports. There is one person there that they claim has an extensive knowledge of martial arts and amateur boxing, but he was the CEO of PCYC New South Wales, and the only knowledge I'm led to believe he has of them sports and martial arts is they were practised in the um, PCYC he was the CEO of. Yep. Um, I spoke to some people that helped train him for an amateur boxing, like one of them exhibition type things and they said he knew nothing yeah um, so, so it's more for, for the yeah. so the, the members of the board uh, for one point is yeah, uh, well, the, the, you feel that they're, they're not qualified they're to, not qualified to, to um, be part of the board the, the, well you've got a member of raptor what's the gang squad got to do with what's raptor raptor the gang squad what's that the gang squad they they look after omc and oh so the superintendent um is from raptor she's on the csa but I've been told they have to have someone from the police on the CSA and she, she was elected. Yep. But what has Raptor got to do with the combat sport industry? Yep. There's this misconception that um, combat sports and the underworld, well, it's probably there to a degree, but I've never witnessed it in my 43 years personally. I've seen gangsters at shows, yep. but I see gangsters at football games. Yep. What's the difference? Yeah, you know? yeah. Um, so one being that the um, the the board members you feel are, aren't qualified. What's the, what's another point? Well, they have no knowledge of our sport, our yep. industry, the regulations of our sport. For example, I've been at a professional. This was a few years ago. I was at a. Uh, I sanctioned a an am, a pro am a tie boxing kickboxing show, and I controlled the amateur officials. But the pro official was set by the CSA, and they sent a boxing judge to. Uh, judge on an uh, sorry on a full Thai rules fight. Now he knows nothing about Thai rules. Yep. So how can he effectively judge a full Thai rules fight when he's a boxing judge? Mm. That's I've seen boxing judges at MMA fights. Yeah. Uh, and I've seen MMA judges. They just throw in a judge. Yeah. Um, and they don't train their officials. Yep. So lack lack of training of officials. There is no training, um, to my knowledge, done to any of the officials. They get them normally from amateur boards, and now the CSA. Well, I represent. I, I don't want to get into politics with yep. this. I love the sport. As long as it's a legitimate organisation that exists all around the world, I'm happy to support it. Um, the WK was the, the organisation I represent. Yep. We were the first sanctioning body in the country. My boss, Bob Jones, who I have no ties or affiliations to, I'm not a member of Zendu Kai or BJC, I just work for him. Yep. Um, he helped write the original legislation, the Boxing and Wrestling Control Act of 1986. Why aren't we approved? Yep. We were approved three previous times, now we're not approved because we don't meet a criteria set by someone that doesn't know what they're talking about. And actually, when you look at their criteria for approved amateur bodies, the CSA doesn't fit into that criteria. So how can someone write a criteria when the professional organisation doesn't fit that criteria? Mm. Um, I've asked many of these questions to many different politicians and and I've always just fobbed off. So, yep. you know. so um, uh, can you give us a, some uh, another sort of 
thing, a p bullet point, um, as to what um, people are signing the petition for, other than um, so well, we've, we've covered the, the they're, they're board supposed members. To be, they're, they're supposed to be improving safety. Mm -hmm. They've done nothing to improve safety. Okay, now all amateurs, their medical goes through to the CSA. So let me just, okay, they have improved one little thing. Amateurs are now go through the, the sanction, through the CSA. Fighters that fought on a WKA show, fighters that fought on an ISCA show, I'm pretty sure fighters that fought on Muay Thai Australia show, they had serology done. They had, so that's cool. They, they've made that clear and they've made that loophole where fighters could f slip through what, if there's a knockout, through a head, yep. a head shot, like um, you got a 28-day suspension. Yep. People could slip through that gap. Yep. Um, so that's the one thing they have done about improving safety. But they said they were going to scrutinise matches. Well, how can they scrutinise the integrity of a match when they know nothing about the competitors? Yeah. Um, I've witnessed many, many, many professional boxing fights that aren't mismatches. They're public beatings. Yeah. And how can they scrutinise these matches when no one on the board knows anything about the fighters? Yeah. Um, that's wrong. Someone's going to... Do well, we've had two deaths in this state. Mm. After the first death, the, the uh, coroner's office said that the CSA or the minister's office should improve safety. They didn't improve safety. They made it a revenue machine for the state government with all these fees. Um, um, which, that, which, oh. and he's, he's speaking about the, um, the, promoter, the promoter fees, which to, I'll, I'll post yeah, up in the group as well. The, the, to obtain a permit, an amateur permit used to be free. Now, depending on your crowd, ranges from $100 to $400. Okay, that's, that's all right. That's not too bad, all right? And a pro permit, now pro permit means one pro fight or 20 pro fights. It's a pro permit. You can have an amateur undercard with one pro fight. It used to cost $165. Now it starts at $850. You have three prices. Depending on your crowd, it's $850, two grand or five grand. So it goes on the amount of uh, well, people I coming asked, in the door? Yeah, it goes on the size of the venue and the size of the crowd. Now, right. a couple of questions I asked in a meeting with these people mm -hmm. that know nothing was where did you get these figures from and they refused to answer me at first and i said well no nah, if i'm going to pay these fees i want to know where these fees came from mm. whose ass did you pull them out of basically because it's you've based this on the ufc obviously which is a multi-million dollar organization mm. um how can you base this on promoters in sydney you know um they then told me that it was due to a, uh, additional administration costs um, my next question was, can you tell me where the additional administration costs mm -hmm. are on the approval of a permit? Whether there's five people there or a thousand people there or 10,000 people there, the administration costs are the same. We send in a permit request, they stamp it, they send it back. Right. So that was bullshit as well, obviously, and they didn't like that. And they're kind of used to me doing that anyway, <laughs> so I don't mind. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah. you know, they're trying to legislate our industry out of existence. And, okay, combat sports can be a dangerous sport, but so can rugby league. Mm. Um, why aren't rugby league players scrutinised like a, uh, a fighter is? Mm. Uh, the CSA now state that you, I think you've got to put in your fight card on Tuesday, and there can be no changes unless that name is written on the card. Mm. Well, that's destroying our sport. We're in an industry where people train hard and can be injured, if you've got a guy that's past the physical and is ready to fight, why can't he take the fight? Mm. Um, he has to pass a, fit, a physical, which means he has to be fit. If he's medically fit, he's got his everything done, why can't a fighter fight? You yeah. know, A lot of people that are fighters, they'll take a fight on short notice because if they're ready, mm. you know, well, they've got to lose. Yep. So that, that hasn't improved safety. Yep. Um, that's, again, just helped destroy our sport. Uh, the medical book, I think, is a good thing, but I think the way they've done the medical book is ridiculous. They should have... An, like, fighters forget their medical book. Fighters lose their medical book. Um, have an online database. I've got one in the pipeline that's nearly completed that actually a friend of mine's designed it for me and he punches everything in. And if you're under a medical suspension, you can't be submitted into the um, database until that medical suspension's up. Yep. It automatically emails you when your serology t tests are expired. Uh, if you're registered with seven different organisations, when that organisation's um, registration yep. is, it will yep. email you. So if I'm a small time person with not many brains can organise something like this, how come a government organisation with uh, unlimited funds can't organise something which is really smart, mm. which is zero cost to the taxpayer because yep. they don't have to bring print books.
mm. that, that they don't have. The, it's all done on a, a database, mm. you know. Yeah. That, that's a much wiser idea. And I'll give you an example of a promoter I've worked for that was asked to stop a fight because the fighter didn't have his medical book. That medical book had been compromised. He'd fought in Melbourne under the martial arts board twice without a book. Yeah. And the promoter was told to stop the fight. Well, in my opinion, that's a load of crap. They're the regulatory body. They're the people that should stop the fight, not the promoter. Yeah. Uh, the promoter went to stop the fight. The unregistered management of that fighter, which is an offence, and that management has still been untouched, then threatened the promoter physically, threatened the promoter financially, and then threatened to create a riot in the venue. So that particular promoter let the fight happen, and it's not, it's, it's not their place to stop the fight. That's like the police asking you to book someone for speeding. Mm. They're the regulatory body. They should have stopped the fight, not yep. the promoter. And um, that promoter's been hit with a $5,500 fine now. Mm, wow. That's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that's just another example of incompetence from the New South Wales CSA. Yep. So, so, um, so what do you think that the government board could be doing um, better to improve situations well, like that or, or you know, everything else? Well, one of the things I brought up, I, I was at a big show, the Australia vs China show. Yep. And I was backstage. I'd done a lot of the backstage management. And... I supplied the gloves, I allocated the gloves. One of the rules they've got is that welterweights wear eight ounce and above welterweight wear 10 ounce. But what they've done in the legislation is they've written welterweight down as being one set weight, which is a boxing weight division. Different organisations have a different weight limit. Mm. Now for the, the um, it was 300 grams difference, I yep. had to put 10 ounce gloves on a welterweight. Yeah, right. Because they've used a boxing weight division to um, determine welterweight. Well, they have no knowledge. They should have just said welterweight mm. without the weight division. Yep. Um, I had two inspectors there and one person that's in charge of compliance and um, penalties mm. who know virtually nothing. Mm. Um, they didn't even... Two of them didn't even know what gloves were worn by what people. Uh, WLF rules state that heavyweights had to wear 12-ounce gloves and when I stated this, the head of compliance said he had to check I'm like, well, you're the head of compliance. Who are you going to check with? Um, you should know that. That's your job. Yep. I know. And I said, what's the big deal? We're putting heavier gloves on a guy, not lighter gloves. Mm. Um, and the person he was going to check with knows nothing about tie boxing and kickboxing. Yeah. Might know a little bit about boxing. Um, another example, in the change room, one of the Chinese fighters that couldn't speak English was strapping up his hands and the inspectors called me over and I asked if I could help them with the glove allocation and because I wasn't an inspector I wasn't allowed to and it was like mate I'm only trying to help but you're the guy getting paid 40 bucks an hour not me do it I don't care same guys come and see me and said what's he doing I'm like well you should know hmm. I go and you're getting paid 40 bucks an hour you didn't want me to help you with the gloves but now you want me to help you with this yep. to let you know what he's doing by the looks of it he strapped his hands up too tight and all he was doing was snipping the wraps to release the pressure. Yep. He was in no way being uh, derog you know, detrimental to his opponent. And an inspector should know that. I mean, these inspectors do, a, I think, a four-hour course on a s right. to become an inspector. Yet someone like me that's got 43 years of knowledge, I yep. couldn't be an inspector mm. unless I do the course. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, they're just some of the examples. I had an argument with the head of compliance and I said, you guys have turned this into a revenue machine. Mm. And the surprising answer I got for him was, well, actually, sir, this isn't making money. This is costing the department money, which he thought I'd shut up, which he just opened the doors for me to nuke him some more because I say, that's wonderful, sir. You've put something into place that's not working that's now costing the taxpayers money. I said, that's great. And I've informed the shadow minister of this as well. So mm. hopefully she can talk to the minister. The funny thing is I've met with three previous ministers without a hassle. This new minister refuses to meet with me. Right. Um, and when I say me, I don't go... I'm the WK rep. A good friend of mine, Robert Murdoch Sr., is the ISK rep. To my knowledge, we're the only two sanctioning bodies in the world that cooperate. We're supposed to be in competition with each other. Uh, we worked together when we were both approved. Funny that either of us are not approved still mm. because we've been a thorn in the side of the CSA, I presume. Yeah. Um, we've done everything for the benefit of the sport, not our own financial gain, you know. And for that, we've been penalised, you yeah. know. And he will, this new minister, they will not allow him to meet with me and Rob. 
Because whenever I meet with someone, I take it with me because yep. that's just fair, you know? Mm. Yeah. So, so with, the, with the petition that people can sign, um, what will happen if we can get the signatures? If we can get 10,000 signatures, they are forced to debate this in the lower house. That will bring to the attention of, the, of someone somewhere what they're doing wrong. Because I'm pretty sure the parliament was misled with the changes in... Because when I spoke to the original shadow minister I felt, uh, first dealt with guys in Gari, they said they were told they're improving safety, this is what's going to happen, blah, 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 and they've done it. When I met with him and told him what they've actually done, he was really surprised. Right. And he was a martial artist himself. Mm. Um, he was real surprised. It's got yeah. nothing to do with safety. It's got to do with revenue generation, and my opinion is they're trying to legislate a sport out of existence, really. Right. And what, do, what is your ultimate um, uh, goal for... So let's say, you know, the like, we'll just say... The petition goes through, it gets debated. What, what's your ultimate... Um... To, to, have an, to have a combat sport authority that knows what they're talking about, that, that actually care for the sport, care for the industry. Like, they're the opinion that we want, we, we have no safety issues. I don't want people to die doing what I love. Mm. You know, I don't want people to get hurt. I want this sport to flourish. Mm. You know, we've had two deaths in this state, all right? Um, my, the, the last one... Well, I was hoping to be subpoenaed to the coroner's court because I was there. Yeah. Um, I, I'd done the ring hire for it. I was interviewed by the police officers uh, when they asked for a statement, which I filled in. And in that statement, I enclosed seven letters dated over 10 years of me complaining about the incompetence of the former Boxing Authority of New South Wales and the current Combat Sport Authority of New South Wales. And a lot of these things were to do with safety. Yeah. What sort of, what sort of uh, safety regulations would you, would you like to see what? implemented? Um, well, or removed? Remove headgear, for yep. one. Everyone has the misconception that headgear is safer. Headgear is more dangerous. Amateur Boxing removed headgear a couple of years ago. Um, they've done a concussion test on that. It actually causes more brain damage. People go like, how? Well, your brain floats around in your skull and every time it gets hit, you get hit, it smashes up against the back of your skull, which causes concussion. Mm. The more punches you receive, the more damage is done. Um, all headgear does is stop cuts. Yep. Um, you're still getting hit. and. It's better to be knocked out than it is to accumulate punches over yeah. a period of time. And these people that sit behind a desk and push a pin, they don't understand. They've never been hit before. Yeah. You've been, I'm sure you've been hit with headgear on and without headgear. Oh, I've actually never worn headgear. Yeah, well, <laughs> pretty much. I wore headgear a couple of times, two weeks before a pro fight, so I didn't get cut. Mm. And I hated it because the headache you got after mm. was ridiculous, yep. you know? And without getting into politics, there were organisations in the past that had get headgear and they set up the headgear, yep. so then we had to follow suit, and then they removed headgear, and now these people are wearing headgear really, I'm the only guy, it was me and one other bloke that, mm. I haven't entered a fighter into a competition for three years. Yep. Well, it'll be three years in December. That's killing me mentally. And what's what's the reasons you haven't entered them in? Because of the rules of the CSA, and because of, I'm not gonna put our headgear on an amateur fighter. Yep. And if I can get this to court one day, um, I don't know how I'll pay for it, but if I can get this to court one day, I haven't gone against my beliefs. Mm. I haven't compromised my beliefs just to make money. I haven't entered a fighter in for three years because I do not believe in what they've done is right. Yeah. If I start entering fighters in, I've, I've conceded, I've gone, oh, it's okay. Well, it's not okay. They've got inspectors that are untrained. They've got, uh, like with the pros, officials that are untrained as far as I'm concerned. And they've got a, a regulatory body that has no understanding of the sports, the industry, or the legislation they're supposed to be regulating. Mm. It's supposed to concern itself with safety and integrity. Um, th there's obviously that many mismatches I see specifically in professional boxing, but I've seen some in pro kickboxing as well. Mm. I don't think they were deliberate mismatches in the kickboxing. I think it was just mismatches because people don't know. Yeah. Um, um, other, because we've only got a few more minutes yeah. left on this. Um, so other than so the headgear situation as well, is there any other safety um, yeah. regulations they need to remove or, or yeah, implement? Yeah, I think they should do something about cutting weight too. Yep. That's a big issue with me. Yep. That They have one weigh-in. And yep. I think any fight that goes over eight rounds, there should be several weigh-ins over a month. Yep. Because you cannot rehydrate brain fluid in 24 hours. Mm. 
and you know on a long distance fight that's going to happen yep. you know yeah and that's real important there are these guys cutting weight to a ridiculous amount mm. and there's one way yeah certain organizations have a, a spasmodic way over a month and you cannot lose a mm. percentage of of weight mm. over a fight that goes so many rounds which yep. is safer you know yeah so so um just to wrap up at the end of this um let's uh just do a bit of a recap and um if you can explain so i guess let's say it gets uh, through to parliament they do debate it yep. what would you your advice be um that would uh get things to to the level that it needs to be oh, i've argued with these people for so long i don't know we need people in there that know what they're talking about the the guy that started the legislation on combat sports was a, a minister michael clary i think and somewhere in hansard hansard which is political documents, he wrote that this legislation should never be a user pay system. Yep. It concerns itself with integrity and safety. And it shouldn't be, so, you know, it should be subsidised by the government. I think that also is an important thing. That these fees, which I've been told aren't covering the costs, haven't worked. And we've had another death since they've brought these rules in. So obviously they're not working. Mm. No one in the, you know, I've been on the phone to four or five ABC journalists. I've been on the phone to 60 Minutes. Uh, it's not a story they want to cover because it doesn't sell, it doesn't rate, but, you know, mm. I'm trying to get the message out there the best I can. Yeah, okay. You know, everyone goes grime as a whinger. <laughs> well, maybe grime is a whinger, but I'm whinging for the whole industry, not yep. just me, not my financial gain, for the industry in whole. So we all, you know, benefit from what I'm trying to do. Not just yep. me. Yep. I don't want to be Mr. Thai Boxer or Mr. Combat Sport. I want us all to progress in a forward, safe manner, you know. Yeah. So our sports grow. Yep, great. You know, that's yeah. what it's about. Awesome. So what I'll do, guys, is um, I will post a couple of those things in, and the petition into the comments of the group. Um, feel free to comment below um, to, to comment on anything that you guys want to um, agree with or disagree with. Um, but, yeah, I'd like to start a discussion on this and um, see if uh, we can... Yeah, because yeah. it's, it's going to go Australia-wide. People in Brisbane, you're going to get a CSA within the next three or four years. And believe me, if I was to live in any state, from what I believe and what I've seen, the best state to live in, as far as I'm concerned, is Adelaide. They've got a combat sport authority, a martial arts board that actually communicate with the industry. Yeah, right. Um, they, they look like they've got it switched mm. on. The mm. rest of them, I think New South Wales is the laughing stock, but, mm. you know... Yeah, right. So, All right, well, thank you very thank much you, for your time. Thank you um, very much. And, yeah, we'll, um, Sign the petition, please. We need 10,000 signatures yep, ASAP. And uh, you need them by a certain date? Oh, Just no, as soon well, as possible. As soon as possible we yep. can get it done. Yep. And it can't be an online petition. Everyone's been telling me do it online. It has to be a physical signature. They can't table this in Parliament unless they're physical signatures. So you can print the, you can print the letter out, the yep. petition out. You can put just one signature on it or get a bunch of signatures on it. Right. You need to print it out and send the original signature document to the address that's on the bottom of it. Well, yeah, I've got to chuck that yeah. in yeah. the I'll, I'll email that to you. So. Yeah, awesome. All right. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you very much.